Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to this series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. In this one, I'm going to be going through eight adventures that are all excellent, they're very short, and I think they would all be awesome as level zero adventures or funnels. Now, not all of them are designed for that. A couple of them, or at least one of them, is designed to be a funnel. But I think all of these, regardless of what level they're set for or the intention behind them, they have the perfect, in my opinion, perfect for like funnel vibe. I don't know. I love all of these uh, as funnels. As leveled adventures, I actually think some of them are not as good. Some of them are great as leveled adventures. Some of them are not as good as leveled adventures, just due to the design philosophy behind them. But I think as funnels, they are all great. So you should look through these all and consider, if you haven't ever run a funnel before, you should, you should consider using one of these as a funnel. I think they'd all be great. So I'm going to go through eight of them. Um, the first is Lair of the Bog Lich. This is, I think, $1.50 on uh, itch.io. I recently was kickstarted and I backed it because it just seemed like an interesting little adventure. Now, it's four to six characters uh, for level one through two. It's OSR compatible. It's pretty uh, OSR, you know, system neutral. Um, this is by uh, Simone Tometa, or sorry, this is by Medora Games. The art's by Simone Tometa. Uh, it's about this village in the woods where there is a marshlands nearby and creatures, the villagers have been wandering off into the marsh. So it's a perfect low-level motivation. Your villagers in a village, your fellow villagers have been wandering off into the bog towards this particular site in the bog. You need to do something about it. I think that's a great uh, funnel adventure motivation, right? You're just villagers. And the bog lich itself is not a full lich. You don't have to worry about that. It's not going to be that you know, incredibly powerful, but it is, uh, it is strong enough that you're going to probably lose some creatures there, lose some, some players. So you have some adventure hooks, and these are great. You can use the one that you want. Now, again, this is designed to be a, a level one, uh, a low-level adventure, level one or two. But I think, again, this works as a funnel. You have, you know, three or four players. Each of them makes two to four characters, and you throw them at this, at this uh, dungeon. And it's designed for, again, it's just sort of a system-neutral game. You get the map here, uh, and then on the next page you get descriptions of each of the rooms and what's going on there. You have um, mini-maps created for each of the rooms, which is great. shows you where you are. It's kind of gross and creepy what's happening here. The mud, the bog lich is kind of a dangerous thing. And then you get the some random encounter, uh, some random, I shouldn't say encounters, but random tables at the very end. That's the whole PDF. It's just these few pages. Um, so as a level one to two adventure, it's pretty short. You're going to use this as maybe a side adventure. It's going to be a one shot, definitely a one shot, with some maybe a chance to come back if the players don't actually destroy the bog lich, because the it, the way to de completely destroy it isn't necessarily immediately apparent. So maybe they've dealt with it before, and maybe it came back, or maybe it comes back again after this adventure. And so then they have to figure out, okay, well we dealt with it before, now we have to deal with it again. How do we do that? So that might be one thing. Um, now, as a as a product, um, it's only five pages, and you know, a dollar fifty. That seems fine, especially because of the art. The art's great. You only get a few pieces, but it makes sense. Some people are probably not going to want to, you know, spend a dollar fifty on a five-page product. I don't think it bothers me. I think it's great, um, and and especially because I think the ideas are awesome. The tone is pretty good. It's gross, and the design is is great. I, I just like it a lot. So, Lair of the Bog Lich is a great little. OSR adventure to plug into your game to start off a campaign, I think as a funnel it would be excellent. So again, I highly recommend this one. Great, uh, a great little adventure here. The next one is Cave of the Slumbering Crawlers. This is designed for the use with the Shadow Dark RPG. Now this is a really, I mean, it just seems like it's designed to be a funnel, even though it isn't really. Um, there is one interesting element to this, which is that it seems really easy, as written, to just get out. So you might have to do a little bit of work to prevent that from happening. But what you have is this brief map. Oh, this is by Gabriel Hernandez. I've reviewed one of uh, the products by Gabriel before. Um, I did the uh, the Tomb of the Lightning, or I forget what it was called, <laughs> where the lightning strikes the barrow over and over and over, and there's the necromancer and the flesh column. I forget actually what that adventure is called, but I've reviewed that one before and I really liked it. And this one is similar. Now what I like about this is that it's kind of faction play. You wake up in this cave and you have been thrown to a slime mold. There's a cult that worships this slime mold. It's been sort of like a hive mind. 
and they are gathering sacrifices and throwing you down into the pit, and you kind of wake up. The adventure kind of begins with you waking up in this place after having had these amazing hallucinations and dreams where everything's going your way, everything's perfect, and you're like, oh, like the, the idea is the players kind of say, is this what's going on? And then as soon as they start to say that, they can start to make checks to wake up. And once they do, they wake up. That'd be kind of a funny way to begin a campaign. You just start off by being like, hey, you guys, you know, you, and you describe how their day is going perfectly. And then you like have them try something and have them start off with a different adventure and everything's going well. And they're, critic they're critting and they're succeeding. And they're like, what's going on? Oh, and then you wake up in this place. And it's like, oh, it was a hallucination. That'd be kind of an interesting way to start off this campaign. It's one of the reasons I like it. Now, again, it's not necessarily designed as a funnel. It's for Shadow Dark, and the stats are given in Shadow Dark terms, and some of these creatures are pretty hard. I don't know if a, uh, if you just fought them straight up. I don't know if a, a, the funnel creatures, funnel characters would be able to handle it, but you could modify it slightly, just enough to make it a funnel, because that idea is really good. Now, you could take that idea and put it into a leveled campaign as well, but I think it would be a great way to start a campaign, right? You start off with these characters, maybe a whole village, uh, and then you wake up next to all these villagers, and then maybe you roll to create them at that point. <laughs> or maybe in their dreams they've made themselves into this level one character, level five character, and then they start off as a little... You could really pull the, the rug out from under your players, right? Like, okay, we're going to do a high-level campaign. Everyone roll level five characters. Oh, awesome. And you, you guys get to start with a magic item each. And then you, oh, yeah, you start off with all of these extra stuff. And then they wake up and they're just peasants. <laughs> depending on your group, they might not enjoy that. But depending on your group, they might really enjoy that. So anyway, I think that's kind of a fun introduction to this adventure. Um, Essentially, you have these two factions, the Fungus and the Mold, and they're at war, and they don't like each other very much. So you can, uh, you know, uh, play one or the other. You kind of have to side with one or the other. Maybe not. Maybe you just destroy them all. But uh, they use, they use um, because they're not really mobile themselves as a Fungus and a, and a Mold, they kind of have to use proxies. And so the proxies are fighting. There's lizard men. there's uh, giant centipedes, there's a Cave Brutes, which is basically a, um, what do you call those, a... Um, Umber Hulk, and then you have the cult outside with their zombies. And that's the whole thing. That is the whole thing. Now, this one is Pay What You Want on DriveThruRPG. It's a fantastic little, again, low level, I would say, uh, introductory adventure. You could use it in a, in a different campaign, obviously, but in a, in a leveled campaign. You could even use this as like an interlude, right? You've been playing a campaign for a while, the players are carousing, they've had a great night, then they wake up the next morning and everything's going great, and then you have them appear here. So you could totally do that in an ongoing campaign. It would be a great, like, you know, shock to an ongoing campaign. But I think as a, as a funnel, this would be a great way to start a campaign. Um, okay, the next adventure I wanted to cover here is Temple of the Smoking Eye. By the way, I'm going through kind of as they get longer and longer. I'm starting off with the lower level ones and getting to the higher level ones. Temple of the Smoking Eye is... Uh, designed for Shadow Dark. Once again, it's a dungeon for levels one through three. Now, this is by the same designer as the Rotting Garden or the Rotten Gardens of Reflesia, which I've reviewed before. Um, actually, it's been in two of my reviews, <laughs> but I really like that adventure just for the tone. And this one's cool in the same way. It's a little bit longer. It's a little bit bigger, but it's just a great low-level, very small dungeon. Uh, essentially, there's this cave near an old country road. It's, you could just drop this into a world, and uh, there's this cavern below and inside the cavern there's a really cool visual dungeon. I mean it's visually very interesting which is which was how I found the rot, Rotting Gardens of Reflesia too. The tone is very very consistent. There is a, a vibe that it gives you which is better than a lot of dungeons out there right where you kind of get you know this that and the other vibe as you're going through. It's not terribly consistent. This one is absolutely consistent in this uh, citrine uh, well that's what's going on basically citrine smoke. You go to this massive cavern there is a huge cavern and there's a temple hanging from the ceiling by chains. This 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 rock uh, that's hanging from the ceiling, but the temple built atop of it. And then in these, there's down below in the cavern floor, there's this giant titan skeleton with citrine crystals, like, you know, um, encrusting it and growing out of the smoke that's lift, that's floating out of its central eye, because it's got three eyes. And uh, you, uh, there's a cult that's been set up in this temple, and they're worshiping, and they're inhaling the smoke, and they're getting these visions and stuff. And so you can kind of use that to your advantage. You can gather some of the citrine, uh, it, it's the crystals. It's really cool. I think it's citrine, by the way. I, I, I have actually never heard anyone say that word. Maybe I have. I just have, don't have connected that. I think it's citrine. But you get the smoking eye cultists. Uh, there's 
uh, you know, just stuff to run into here, random encounters, some traps. Um, there is, uh, really what you're dealing with is just the cultists. And, and then at the very end, you get to this r ritual room, and if you're fighting these creatures, and while you're fighting the, the cultists, you're going to accidentally summon, probably, you're going to accidentally summon the Citroen Titan, which comes through a portal, and it can't fit the whole body through, but its head can get through, and it starts firing these beams and trapping people in, in Citrine Crystal, and you have to fight it and try to drive it back through the portal and then close the portal. Really cool. And then you get some magic items and some uh, treasure at the end. You get a great little bit of the stuff at the end. So you have the cultists, the Citrine Titan head, giant bats, and then random encounter table at the very end. This is by Sam McKay, by the way. You get the information right at the very end, Sam McKay. Fantastic little adventure. And you, I think you can see why it would be great as a funnel, right? Because it's very short. It's just like nearby a town. Maybe the cult has started taking people. And, and, and one of the people here is a, a local uh, rutabaga farmer, I think, or something like that. Um, a radish farmer. Uh, his wagon's been taken, and so he's being held as a future sacrifice. So they're sacrificing people here. So again, what, you could have this idea of the village is being harassed. There's no adventurers nearby. we got to go solve it. There's this giant cave with, this, with the old temple that, you know, maybe there's rumors about it out in the woods, out near the road, but no one has ever gone in there or come out. Uh, you just don't go there, and then all well, these groups have set up there, and now you have to go in and deal with it. So that would be something to, to you know, kind of a, an introductory adventure there. So the next adventure I want to cover is The Dark Contracts, a weird and wild weaving of Arthurian legend for characters level 1 through 2 by, this is PhD20. I gotta say, first of all, PhD20 was one of the first YouTube channels that I followed way back when. Uh, I think Kirk used to do YouTube a lot more. I don't know if he still does it now. I think he has a blog. But back in the day, I used to watch like PhD20, uh, Samwise 7 RPG, Dungeon Master Johnny, uh, Fistful of Dice, just like a whole bunch of those, you know, early YouTube brigade, D&D brigade people. That was like my first, oh man, I loved that era of YouTube D&D channels and stuff like that. So uh, just before 5e, just at like the D&D 5e playtests in that era, oh man, it was so good. So anyway, uh, when I saw that Kirk had designed an adventure, I was like, oh, I gotta look at it. And I really like it. It's really, really cool, especially, again, with the mindset of this as a funnel. I think this would be awesome as a level zero adventure. So what we have essentially is Merlin's brain is in a jar, Excalibur is broken, Arthur dealt with dark powers. Now it's not specifically Merlin, it's M. It's not specifically Arthur, it's A, or the king. It's not specifically Guinevere, it's G. But it's definitely like a dark take on the end of the Arthurian legend, you know. Um, now there's a brief table of rumors and legends, and you get the gameplay for this dungeon. Brief map, very good. Great overall look to the dungeon map. Lots of different choices about how to proceed. You can go, you know, basically anywhere through the dungeon. It's, it's webbed very well, so you're going to have a different process to the dungeon. My one criticism is that some of the rooms are just empty, and then you roll for random encounters in those rooms. That's kind of a, a missed opportunity for me. I think I would have just put something cool in those rooms and then also had random encounters that can happen elsewhere. But what you get is essentially just this kind of a puzzle dungeon. You, you go through the dungeon and try to find these phrases, and then you say them in one place and you'll get the... the uh, the thing <laughs> comes to life, uh, Dreadmore can either be freed or set to stone, if you know those words. Uh, I, I, you know, depending on, I would probably have him be woken up by some other means too, and then uh, um, you can, if you know those words, you can set him back to stone by going to the chapel and speaking the words. But essentially you're just going through finding treasure, finding some magic items, fighting lots of monsters in the random encounter tables, and uh, finding out what really happened with this Dreadmore guy. And, uh, it's not very happy. It's not very happy at all. But you can get some really cool magic items here. There's a good chaos table. And again, I just think that this is a fantastic... Um, oh, I don't know. It's a fantastic funnel dungeon. And again, you could use it as a low-level a low level adventure. But I just think that the tone of it would be much more uh, amenable to a funnel. Now, what would draw a group of low-level level zero characters here? That's a little bit harder. There's no easy motivation for me, it seems, to draw them here. But that would be easy enough to create. Maybe the statue comes to life periodically and goes around devastating the countryside. And so you have to come in here and find a way to put an end to it once and for all. Or maybe the spirit of Arthur has called out to be laid to rest, the spirit of Guinevere. Or Merlin's brain, which is in here, the brain in a jar, <laughs> has 
has psychically linked with one of the party members or with the village and is asking them to do something about the stone statue before, you know, Dreadmore awakens once and for all, you know, whatever it is, you can find a way to make them drawn here, either through a party or not. But I think it's just a great low-level adventure with some pretty de deadly traps and deadly fights. Uh, Dreadmore himself is actually fairly easy to kill. He's only got nine hit points, but maybe... It's the sort of thing where every time you kill him, he turns to stone for a round or two. And the only way to actually kill him is to put those, uh, is to say those three words in the chapel when he's there too. So you have to lure him to the chapel or something like that. That'd be kind of cool. And it would be a great way to end the uh, the fight. I don't know. You know, there's things you could do to make this a little bit more amenable to a low-level adventure. To, I'm sorry, I should say to a funnel. But I just love the tone of it. And I think that it does fit with the idea of here's a tomb with kind of a, as you choose approach to the dungeon, with some deadly fights and, you know, a couple uh, interesting puzzles to solve. It also works as a low-level dungeon. I think of all of them, this is the one that feels the least like a funnel and the most like a regular adventure. But I also, but I just saw it and I was like, you know, as a funnel, this would be great. I, I could totally see setting a particular tone for my campaign by, by starting a level zero adventure in a dungeon like this. So anyway, highly recommend this dungeon. I think it's great. Oh, by the way, this and the Temple of the Smoking Eye are both uh, pay what you want on DriveThruRPG. So once again, I will uh, put links below to where you can get those. The next one is Rise of the Blood Olms, which is a Cairn adventure for Cairn's second edition. Now, this is by Yokai Gall. This is brand new. As far as I know, it's just come out because Cairn's second edition was just kickstarted or is being kickstarted now. Um, I backed that Kickstarter. You guys should check it out. It looks really cool if you haven't already backed it. This is a free adventure on DriveThruRPG, so you can go right there. You can go there right now and download it for free. Totally, uh, not even pay what you want. Just grab it, and it's a really cool adventure. If you know if you know Yokai Gals, um, I think that's by the way how you pronounce uh, his name. I don't know. <laughs> I actually don't know, but I think that's true. Um, but if you if you know the adventures already, then you're going to know that this is good. It's deadly. But that's okay, and especially, again, as a funnel, I think this is fantastic. Now, how would you do a funnel here? It would be much more like, hey, you're a bunch of low-level or you're a bunch of dudes who are like, hey, we're going to we're gonna be a mercenary company. And someone's like, all right, well, we hire you to go find these survivors of this expedition. All right, great, a bunch of peasants, essentially, who aren't equipped very well, go to find, <laughs> go to find their, uh, these, uh, you know, this, this adventuring expedition. Uh, it, no, this one, again, a little bit like the last one, is probably more suited to be just a regular leveled adventure. But I, I don't know. I, when I read it, I was like, this seems like there's enough of the sudden danger spikes. There's enough kind of cool random magic stuff to happen. There's enough exploring and different ways to approach it. I think it could work as a funnel. Now, maybe it's just me reading too much into it because I like funnels so much. <laughs> but anyway, it, it, it works either way. It's a great adventure regardless of how you look at it. Essentially, um, the world that's being implied here is also really cool. I like it a lot. But essentially, there's this expedition that's gone to find what's what happened with this... Uh, uh, the river is going down, the, uh, the, the water level is draining, and people don't really know why. Um, and there's a cave system that has uh, uh, appeared, and this expedition has gone to see it. And then we don't know... Where, where where they're coming or where they are and they gave them a very rel relatively powerful magic item the, in the survey team was given a relatively powerful magic item and the order who sent them out would like it back and so you're kind of sent there to get the magic item back and rescue the people if possible um, it's not going to be possible to rescue them all uh, you have information about the world the order of nine the expedition team the roots which is basically the the underdark it's a really cool idea i like that idea a lot the Silver Silk River, Red Hermit Tree, the Olms, and then the Tube Worms. Now, the Olms are certainly, they seem influenced by, oh, I don't know, lots of different creatures. Um, you guys ever seen the movie Descent or The Descent? But people who climb through the caves, it seems like a lot like that. Um, but they're not necessarily, they don't start off being maddened and flesh-eating. Only a handful of them are because they've started to starve. The water level's gone down. The tree that usually feeds them has stopped bearing fruit and they are starving. And so some of them have eaten these tube worms, which have made them go crazy. Cool little Link dungeon with a couple entrances. So just what you want from an adventure dungeon choices and uh, progress through in different ways, along with uh, different entrances. And I really like the campsite. It gives you a very obvious way to go down and a not so obvious way to go down if you spend a little bit of time investigating. Um, there's also stuff to find that is useful throughout most of the rooms, you know, especially for a one shot or for a low or for a funnel. One of the funny things I often see is people will put like as a treasure, 
a lot of, I don't know, like magic, a lot of gold or a magic item that is really useful in other circumstances, but not in this one. One of the things that I always try to do in a funnel or a one-shot adventure is provide resources that they can then immediately use, right? So potions of healing is a good example, but anything like that, a magic item that they don't have to attune to, but a magic item that they can just simply use right away or something that they can discover how to use right away. Um, this adventure does that. There's stuff that you can use within the adventure in the adventure. So great uh, design there. Uh, essentially you go in and there's some, there's actually some uh, negotiation too. There's a couple survivors. One of them has gone mad. The other one is um, not mad. <laughs> and uh, she can tell you more about what's going on. There are the Olms themselves, those who are not crazy. And there's some information you can gather from them. Not They don't really speak, but you can look at the cave drawings and maybe you can see that maybe we should help these things somehow. There are the crazy ones, but there are the other ones that aren't so crazy. And then there is an NPC towards the end who can help you, but he's kind of like a, hmm, it's a hard, help you in one way. The way he's going to help you if you decide to let him help you is mix. It's a mixed blessing, <laughs> shall we say. Yeah, this is the guy Russell. Uh, it's kind of like a fey. Well, he's like a, yeah, he's a water spirit. Um, and he, uh, he doesn't, he can't really be killed. He doesn't have a stat block. You can't harm him. You can drive him away with burning tobacco or incense. That's about it. But he's not really going to fight you. Um, he's just interested in a couple things, and he can give you a boon if you uh, if you want. They're cool boons, but for example, water breathing. The longer you spend in the water, the more you will need to return. Right? Receive a great talent worthy of a great artist. It will give you no pleasure, however. <laughs> Stuff like that. And what he wants in exchange for it is like, you know, kind of like those fey trades, like a person's speech or their ambitions or their laughter, etc. NPC stat blocks. Um, you have some of the characters here. And then you have the relic, the mud sieve, which is uh, the very powerful magic item that was sent with the first expedition. High Electra Catelli is the guy that's gone totally crazy. A lanky, haughty scrivener turned insane. So it's a very short adventure, but it's free. And again, I think it would be great as a funnel. Now, you wouldn't have to use it, obviously, as a funnel. In fact, it's probably it's not designed that way. But it, it just came to my mind as one because of the way it's laid out, because of the kind of, again, high lethality spikes. I tend to see those in, in low-level adventures as um, apt for a funnel because, you know, you, you lose a character, you lose a character. It's not the end of the world. Um, so I could see this either being maybe you're the, the attendants, right? Maybe you're the attendants to the expedition who've been hired to go along with them. Maybe there's a local uh, village that knows about this expedition that's gone missing and they heard about the reward before the... You know, before the rescue party arrives, they think, hey, there's a reward of a thousand gold pieces. We should go in and get that. Think of what it could do for our village, right? I mean, there's tons of ways you could make this into a funnel. And uh, and I think it would be really fun. Um, maybe they know, they don't know about the, the new uh, caves that have appeared. They don't know what's in them, but they know that they're there. Yeah. Anyway, great adventure and great art on this front cover. I love that piece. Really cool. The next adventure is the Tomb of Ostrabarus, which is, or Ostra. Barus, Ostrobarus, Ostrabarus. <laughs> Probably Ostrobarus, it sounds. Uh, Ostrobarus? I don't know. This is by Lost Heretic Press. Now, this is really funny. So this was a Kickstarter, or I think it was, um, it wasn't Kickstarter, but it was one of those, it was one of those, uh, you know, crowdfunded uh, games, and I backed it. And then, uh, and then the creator reached out to me and was like, hey, would you like to review my game? I'd be happy to provide you a copy. And I was like, actually, I already backed it. So it was one of those funny moments where I was already planning on reviewing this. Uh, it was a happy, you know, a happy coincidence there. It's a great gauntlet. And this one actually is a gauntlet. What's interesting about this is that it's one of the longest gauntlets I've ever seen. And it's for 24 plus level zero characters. So this is, I mean, this is a meat grinder of a, of a, of a uh, gauntlet. And that's super cool. Um, I love this one. So it's essentially an Egyptian tomb. And uh, you can get this one uh, on Drive Through RPG for $5. Uh, this PDF is 23 pages. It's a bit longer. But I think this is actually, this is a funnel that will last you several sessions, would be my guess. Um, it's got great design, writing, layout, and design by James Mello. Uh, and Lost Heretic Press is the, uh, you know, the overall company here. Uh, there is, uh, there's one map. The main map of it is by Dyson Logos. And it's a fantastic map, but look how big this funnel dungeon is. This is huge. You know, funnel dungeons are usually like five rooms, maybe 10 rooms. Uh, the longest funnels I've seen up to this point were like 15 rooms. This is 34, 38 rooms. So this is like, you know, if you're gonna do this whole thing, this is gonna be, you're sending in wave after wave of, of 
peasants to try to get further and further into this dungeon to try to find what you need to find. And the reason is a little bit like Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade, if you guys remember the scene towards the end where they're sending in those dudes to the tomb and they keep getting killed. It's a little bit like that. You are captured by a cult, and the art is great, but you've been captured by a cult and you are just being pushed into this, taken by the cult. It's an optional entrance. You wouldn't have to do it in the Valley of Kings, but it, it makes sense. It's a great way to start. You've just been sent to this tomb, you've been forced in, and other other groups have gone in before you and they haven't come out, so you're going to find dead adventurers, you're going to find dead uh, previous explorers, and I think it would be great to do this in waves, like actual waves, right? So you play with level zero characters, everyone makes like, you know, four to eight, which is the, the recommendation, four to eight level zero characters, but then you send them in one at a time instead of sending them in as a group. Maybe you could send them in as a big, big mob, but it would be a lot more interesting to send them in as like a small group. They get as far as they can, disable some traps, fight some monsters, and die. And then the next group goes in and they fight, do the same thing. And you can push and push and push and see how far they can go. Um, the first group of explorers enters one hour before the players. Two people go west, one central, one east. After an hour, girl gets impatient and sends in the players, giving them two torches and randomly rolled equipment for level zero characters. So excellent uh, reason for them to have the level zero stuff. Uh, and the design of the dungeon is brutal. It's traps, it's monsters, it's stronger monsters, it's puzzles, it's secret doors you gotta find, um, and you gotta keep going, you gotta push, because if you try to leave, you're just gonna get killed by the cult. There's some creepy encounters in here. Um, the embalmer was a creepy mummy. Uh, but there's a lot of cool magic items too, and there's a lot of stuff that you can get, and there's a reason why you might be able to uh, survive. It's not just death, but I think that would be fun to just be like, hey, guys, we're gonna play a game where you're gonna be like, thrown into this dungeon over and over and over and it's going to be and just see what happens how many times can you do it so it's sort of like a tomb of horrors but reasonable tomb of horrors with level zero characters you don't care about too much if it's a tpk and everybody dies it everybody dies but i think it's really cool and i don't think it will be a tpk exactly there's a lot of ways of surviving if they're clever and if they um kind of you know don't just run into it and get themselves killed a lot of treasure in here, a lot of treasure, and some good magic items as well. The descriptions are very brief, there's maps repeated very frequently, so you have a sense of where you are in the dungeon. And there are a little, there's a little bit of faction play. Ostrobaris Araman, the Risen King. You look at me, 83 hit points. As a level zero funnel, you're just not fighting him if you have to fight him. Uh, but, um, maybe you don't have to fight him, right? Maybe you don't have to fight him. Maybe you can come up with another way of dealing with him. There are these Udugs, which are the uh, sort of devolved tomb guardians, and they are in the sort of side chambers, and maybe you can interact with them. Maybe. They're not terribly friendly, but maybe you could. <laughs> and find a way out of the dungeon or find a way to stop the cult. And then there's completing the adventure and how to proceed forward with it. So, great adventure, very brutal, very deadly. So, uh, and then, you know, further contact information for. Lost Heritage Press. There's the bestiary at the end, and then the magic items you can find here, along with a great piece of art. Treasure table as well, and then the final last page. Um, I love this dungeon. I think it's a fantastic, fantastic funnel. I love this sort of thing. I haven't seen um, a, a dungeon like this, a funnel like this before, where it's you're, you're very unlikely to, to solve the whole thing. You're very unlikely to go through the whole thing and discover every room. It's a different design of dungeon. This is a you could use this as a as a relatively long dungeon crawl for leveled characters, but I love this idea that it's a really tough, really um, complex, very big place that you're thrown into, and there's a few entrances, and you can kind of choose how you're going to try to approach it, right? And there's some secret doors that connect, and there's some ways of maneuvering through it. You're going to maybe map it out. It's going to take some time. You return to the cult and be like, hey, we we mapped out this whole area. Can we have a reprieve? And maybe those characters get to get to you know step away and they, they get a day off and other people have to go in after them. And so who knows what, but I think it, you could do this. Uh, you could have a lot of fun with a dungeon crawl, a funnel like this. Um, and I think the temptation would have been when designing a dungeon like this to try to make it a leveled dungeon for leveled characters and to try to balance it. But I think it's so much cooler to have it be this massively overly dangerous, massive place for a gauntlet. Again, it's not something I've encountered before, and I would like to see more. So, highly recommend uh, The Tomb of Astrabaris or Astrobaris <laughs> by Lost Heretic Press. Thank you very much for offering to send it, and uh, I'm very glad that I backed it. All right, the next adventures, the next two, 
are by Doom Slakers, or they're both from Doom Slakers Adventures. These are both by J.B. West. Uh, first is going to be Howler, and the next is going to be Winds of the Ice Forest, both of which are awesome. Roll for Osric, or Osric compatible. Uh, and these are both for low-level... Uh, again, they're designed for low-level characters, level 1 to 3, 4 to 6 characters, perhaps. But I think both of these are excellent funnels, especially, I think, the second one, again, because it would be very unique and different than the typical funnel that you kind of usually do. Howler is much more, I would say, ordinary in the way that it approaches dungeon design, in the way that it kind of presents itself. It's a tomb that you're exploring, which a lot of these have been tombs that you're exploring. First of all, the art is awesome. J.B. West, if you guys know J.B. West's illustrations, they're fantastic. <laughs> this one is no different. Great illustrations throughout. Uh, I love that style of art. Um, in fact, I was going to go through, I think it's J.B. West who does the, uh, the black pudding zines, and I was going to, I was thinking about reviewing those because I love, I have them, and I love the art from them. It's just so gonzo and weird, and I love it. Uh, you got a great introduction here about uh, what this adventure is, where it is, how to approach it. The creature, which isn't undead, it eats magic items, which is one thing if you're, if you're a low-level party and you don't have any magic items, you're probably going to have to come up with a new way for the Howler to, or a new reason for the Howler to attack, but you could easily do it. Um, and it's not undead, which means as a level zero party, you're not going to have a cleric who can turn undead, so you're not going to have to worry about that confusion. Uh, but as a level one party, you might have to consider that. Um, or if you're higher level two and if you have magic items, one of the worries is the creature can eat your magic items. So be careful about that. If the players are going to get really mad, and I think there would be players who would, you know, use it sparingly and maybe come up with a new way to get the magic back. Maybe it's a quest afterwards to get their magic back, so it's not just it's not just gone. Uh, the Howler itself it is, is up in this big cemetery, and uh, there's a there's a, a prested hill with a bunch of old tombs on it, and one of them has this barrow. And uh, in case of grave robbers, it's an interesting idea. It's like if players just start digging up tombs and trying to find stuff, they can, but they're going to have to deal with the consequences, and there will be curses and undead that arrive and stuff like that. Now, why would they be coming to the hill, okay, especially as a funnel? Well, this one's pretty easy, right? You have a creature that's going around taking either people or has killed the local hero. In this case, it has killed the local hero who went out to stop it. And, uh, and something's going on. Maybe, uh, maybe the players are actually grave robbers. And they decided, hey, you know, there's that big... There's this, people have said that there's this very valuable uh, ruin up on the hill. We sent our dude to investigate. He hasn't come back. Maybe we should go check it out. Or maybe, hey, we should just take all that money for ourselves, all the stuff in that tomb. Whatever it is, there's ways of making this into a funnel. Uh, great piece of art there for the undead who rise should you try to violate the tombs. And you got some random encounters up on the hill, like vulture attacks, stick tooth goblins, cursed coyotes or coyotes, brash the goblin raider, uh, and a drunken ogre, because, of course, you got a drunken ogre there. Finding stuff in the tomb. You're going to find lots of dead magic items, essentially, because the thing eats magic items. That's pretty cool. You get the sense of what it is. And, of course, there are magic items to find, too, but they're locked behind, uh, you know, uh, doors. <laughs> they're locked away, so you can't just easily get access to them. Uh, there's a lot of text for each of these rooms, and I don't know if it's all necessary, but, you know, it's not bad writing. It's good writing, and it's, again, in that old-school design of the way that rooms are described, certainly. You've got lots of creatures... Now, one thing I wish is they had the map more frequently, but you don't get it till the end. But that's okay. It's a pretty simple map. It's pretty straightforward. One of the reasons why I think it's better as a funnel is that there isn't a lot of choice in how you proceed through the dungeon. It's pretty much room to room to room to room. And I feel like that's more acceptable in a funnel because it's more about whether the party kind of survives the, the things that are being thrown at them room to room rather than you know, being a lot of... The goal isn't really for everybody to survive the way that it is for a level one or higher dungeon, right? Where you have to be clever and get your whole party through or try to get your whole party through. A funnel is like, nope, somebody's probably going to die in each room. And that's certainly the case here, is that there could be some dangerous things, some spiders, uh, some very powerful spiders. And then, of course, the, uh, the howler itself. And then there's a chance for some uh, mummies that can appear. And those mummies are really dangerous if you awaken them, but you don't have to. You could, um, and uh, and then there's some magic items you can find in the tomb, and some of them are very powerful, really powerful, so you want to be careful about uh, using them, and that's the note here. The addition of magic items can seriously impact your ongoing campaign, so make sure to evaluate these lists beforehand and rule out anything you feel would cause a problem in your game. Great advice, always to be uh, followed whenever you're adding magic items into a game. Uh, the story of the Howler, where it comes from, and potentially moving forward into a follow-up adventure. You could certainly do that. And then the sarcophagi of the priestesses. 
One has been opened up already and the magic items are consumed, but the other two are still open and there are two mummies, hill mummies, which are very strong. Uh, and they're, I mean, they're, they're like 13 hit points and 18 hit points. So they're not that, that strong, but they get um, two attacks, it seems. And uh, they have fear and grab and rot. They have some powerful items as well. but they Or they have some powerful uh, feature, abilities as well. But again, they also do have some magic items there. A toe ring of sure-footedness and an amulet of charm. And then you get some sample characters, as well as the appendix with the new stuff. The hill mummy, red death spinners, at least he would... And then the monster list, and with all the hit points for each of the monsters here. So this is a great low-level adventure. Again, this is pay what you want on Drive Through RPG. Uh, fantastic, absolutely fantastic. In fact, you can even get the soft cover book for pay what you want, as far as I can tell, which is kind of incredible. Um, that's just I, I I don't understand how that works. I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you pay some money, because that's you know. It costs money to them. <laughs> Maybe there's a minimum. I don't know how. I forget how. Uh, drive through RPGs prices work. Maybe there's a minimum. Um, yeah. Okay. So the minimum. There it is. Yeah. I was just clicking on the other screen. It's a minimum of five forty three to get it in print, but you can get it for free in in uh, in PDF, um, and that is really really cool. Really really cool. So, highly recommend checking this one out. I like the map here. But as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. There isn't a ton of uh, there isn't a ton of choice about how you're going to approach the uh, the dungeon. It's pretty straightforward. The last one I wanted to cover is Winds of the Ice Forest. This is a very interesting adventure. This is also by J.B. West. This is for Labyrinth Lord, or it's compatible with Labyrinth Lord. What's really cool about this is that it's a different kind of adventure. Instead of being a dungeon, you sort of have a forest, 13 total encounters, or perhaps at least 13 encounters, that you have to solve in order to get through the forest. And there's a bunch of, uh, a bunch of options. Or, or rather, I shouldn't say 13 possible encounters. There are, you have to s choose the right path 13 times. And if you choose the wrong path, you run into a dungeon. You run into a, a, uh, a fight or an encounter or something. Now, this is also pay what you want on DriveThruRPG. Uh, normally, it's $2, I think, but right now it's on sale for pay what you want. It's a great offer, and I'd recommend you guys check it out. And, and again, give, give uh, JV West some, some money for these adventures because they're fantastic. But what you get with this one, as I said, is essentially a bunch of possible encounters that you can choose. The, the players have to choose the correct path 13 times, and unless they have magical assistance or a way they can get lost, and, and that's sort of the idea, is how are they going to find their way through the ice forest. Now this one is super easy as a funnel. You're just a caravan who's trying to make their way through the mountains, through the forest. The, the path used to be easy, but now the forest has been cursed by these, you know, the trees are, are, are trying to trick you, and so they, they come tight together and they open up false trails and they, yeah, and there's a whole rule about how you can travel through them. There's There are safe igloos so your characters can rest up. You don't have to make it all in one go. And this is what I meant by it being a bit of a different kind of adventure, first of all. And it certainly would be a different kind of funnel. It's a sort of longer term. As you go through the forest, you're starting to lose characters. And by the end, you might have made it through with a handful of survivors. I think that's a really cool idea. Something like The Grey or, you know, like The Edge, that movie back in the day, where you're like, you know, out by yourself in the wilderness and you got to find your way through. Um... The players had to flee through the mountains for some reason. Their village had to flee, or this is a caravan, and it broke down, and now they, you know, the, the, the right path got blocked by, a, by a, an avalanche, and now they have to go through the forest to get through. Whatever it is, lots of ways you could have a, a group of people going into this forest on their own with a bunch of adventuring hooks, as well as NPCs that will connect to that hook. Some rumors, and then the forest itself with the encounters that you can run into. Uh, a d20 to determine what which random encounter takes place, or you could pick them. And I think it'd be fun either way. Uh, and you just go through. There's a bunch of cool encounters. Frost coyotes, skeletons, ice beetles, a steep path, the dead guy, <laughs> malicious trees, albino apes, snow and evil dwarves, the frozen witch, the white whalers, they're very hard, uh, trickster trees, the caves of despair you can run into. be a great little place to, for gnomish wisdom. The Treehouse of Korgal. Fantastic. I love that art right there. Love that little map, I should say. Fantastic there. You get Sharn the Wolf, the Idols of the War Queen, Isolisks, the White Whalers, Mysterious Treasure, and the Ice Storm. And that's it. And then you just get to the very end, and in which, regardless of what you do, you have to fight the White Wallet Whalers and the Dark Whaler. And they're, I mean, they're very hard. Eight hit points each for the four, and then 30 hit points for the Dark Whaler. 
that's really hard, so unless you've developed... Now, it, it's worth noting at the very end that these things take triple damage from magical fire. So if you have a way along the way to maybe get some magic fire, um, that would be really good. And if the players use it at the very end, they could push their way through a very dangerous final encounter. Because I could imagine it being very frustrating to play like two or three sessions, slowly losing characters, slowly losing characters. You get to the very end, there's only like five or six left out of the initial 24 or 30 or however many you have. And then they all die to the Dark Wailer. That would be sad. So I might give a way of defeating this or drop his hit points or something like that, if you play it as a funnel. But you don't obviously have to play this as a funnel. If you don't, it's a great adventure anyway. Escape from the forest. I think it's so cool. <laughs> and they'll come through, they'll have some money from the encounters, some magic items from the encounters, they'll level up to level one. Maybe they're maybe they're like, hey, now we have some money, now we have some stuff, have a taste for adventure, maybe we become adventurers after this. You have an appendix at the end for some pre-generated characters, level one and level two. You get, some, you get a new spell, you get some new monsters, as well as the White Whaler, which is really dangerous there. And then some new magic items, and a new class for Labyrinth Lord, I believe. And then the monster list with all the hit points for each of the monsters in this book. The great piece of art there at the end. <laughs> and then you have a random table for things found in the forest. The percentile. Awesome. Love it, love it. And then Trent's the Troll's Roadhouse. You can throw it in if you want. It's an interesting... Perhaps peaceful encounter, perhaps not so peaceful encounter, depending on how the players approach it. But he's not necessarily evil, he's neutral, in fact. Um, but he's got a wraith in the basement, was his mother, she can't leave. Um, so, and there's a succubus upstairs who wants to get out. <laughs> uh, and if, he's too, if they're too loud and crazy, then he'll kick them out or kill them, because he doesn't want his wife to be roused and to get out. <clears throat> Fantastic little place here at the end. So, uh, I highly recommend all eight of these dungeons. The Winds of the Ice Forest, Howler, which is the second one, the True, the, the, sorry, excuse me, the Tomb of Ostrobaris, Rise of the Blood Olms, the Dark Contracts, Temple of the Smoking Eye, Cave of the Slumbering Crawlers, and Lair of the Bog Lich. All eight of these are great adventures on their own right, but they would all be, I think, fantastic funnels. Level zero adventures, little level zero gauntlets for you to run in your game. So, hope this has been an interesting video, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one.